Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we continue with our grammar course. This is A2. If you feel insecure or unsure or uncertain about something we talk about today, please feel free to go back to my A1 grammar course. You can look up, repeat and practice what you want and then come back. So let's start. <music> Last time we talked about the position of words, especially if we have dative and accusative in one sentence. So let's compare the exercise. Zeigst du der Studentin das Museum? Ja, ich zeige es ihr. Erzählst du dem Onkel die Geschichte? Ja, ich erzähle sie ihm. Schreibst du mir die Adresse auf? Ja. Ich schreibe sie dir auf. Gibst du der Tante die Uhr? Ja, ich gebe sie ihr. Bietest du dem Freund den Kuchen an? Ja, ich biete ihn ihm an. Bringst du uns die Bücher mit? Ja, ich bringe sie euch mit. This is the exercise. So let's check out the accusative part. The dative part is in red. You can see der Studentin ihr, dem Onkel ihm, mir dir, der Tante ihr, dem Freund ihm, uns euch. This is all dative. And we substituted the thing or the person into the personal pronoun. Same with the accusative. Das Museum, es, die Geschichte. They forgot here a question mark. It's from a booklet, but it happens. Die Geschichte, sie. Die Adresse, sie. Die Uhr, sie. Den Kuchen, ihn. Die Bücher, plural, sie. This is the Akkusativ. And therefore, you also see how interesting the position is. In a normal sentence with two nouns, we have dative and then accusative. This is what we talked about last week. And when we have personal pronouns, we have accusative and then dative. Don't ask me if this makes sense, but this is how it is. One thing I want to say, this one here, this sounds so hard on your mouth. This is really uh, not the best way to say it. Ich biete ihn ihm an. In, im, an. This is horrible. You don't have to suffer. You can just choose to put one of them into the noun mode again. For example, ich biete ihm den Kuchen an. For example, ich biete ihm den Kuchen an. This sounds a little more natural. Or ich biete ihn dem Freund an. As you know by now, If you have one personal pronoun and one noun, the personal pronoun comes in front. Depends what you want to say. We have a new topic today. Preteritum imperfect. Preteritum or imperfect, you can choose which one you want to say. It's the same. Is the other way to talk about past. If you watched my other videos, we already learned the perfect tense. Perfect. You remember? Ich habe ge Gessen. I ate or ich bin gegangen, I went and so on. This is the first one we learn. Why do we learn it? Because I think the books give it as a first thing or a first option because it's easier because you have to choose haben or sein and then you have to learn one way to change the verb into the Partizip 2. If you learn it once, you don't have to change it. Ich habe gegessen, du hast gegessen, wir haben gegessen. It's always the same. Therefore, it's of course easier. The other way to talk about past is Präteritum. Präteritum, you also learn in A1, but you only learn two verbs first. Haben and sein. Those are the first Präteritum or imperfect forms we learn. Hatte. Ich hatte, du hattest, wir hatten, sie hatten, and so on. 
and the other one from sein, ich war, du warst, ihr wart, wir waren, sie war, and so on. Those are the first preteritum options you learn. But now we will learn some more verbs. And again, they don't want to scare you too much, so they go first with the modal verben, with the helping verbs. For example, wollen. Ich wollte. Du wolltest. Er, sie, es wollte. Wir wollten. Ihr wolltet. Sie wollten. This looks a lot different from the presence. Ich will, du willst and so on. So you take the infinitive, cut off the ending, you keep the stem and then you add te, test, te, ten, tet, ten. This is how it goes. So now you can say in the past, I wanted. As you can see here, we have the present form. Ich will or ich möchte. Ich wollte. This is what we talked about. Another helping verb, modal verb is ich kann. Ich kann in infinitive is können. Now we have again to cut off the ending, but we also have to cut off the umlaut here. And then the same rule applies. Konnte. Okay, this is a little harder, but only because of the umlaut. The same here. Ich muss. Infinitive. Müssen. Cut off the ending. Cut off the umlaut. Musste. Ich muss. Ich musste. Ich soll. Ich sollte. There is no umlaut, so it's easy. Ich darf. Umlaut is in the infinitive form. Dürfen. We cut off the umlaut, the en. Ich durfte. And the most special one, ich mag. The infinitive is mögen. <laughs> This is really an irregular one because you have to cut everything. You, you only keep the m, it seems. It becomes ich mochte. Except the last one, everything else is quite easy, isn't it? The other thing we have to talk about, and we already have talked about it, is how we use those helping verbs. What do they mean? If you are not familiar with that and you cannot handle the information, which is totally fine, you can watch lesson 35 and lesson 36 of my A1 course, and I talk about it really detailed. I hope so, at least. I use the same table. I have it here. Können, possibility, ability. Müssen the urge or a rule, a higher power, a rule you have to follow. Sollen, a duty. Dürfen, permission. Wollen, to have the intention or you are willing to do something. Mögen, wish, possibility. This is the fast version of this table. You can watch my other videos, as I said, to get more familiar with those, with examples, exercises, and so on. So now we know how to build it in the past and we know when to use it. And we will go to the first practice. Let's read the example. Paul ist nicht verreist. Paul ist nicht verreist is what form? It's perfect. Paul konnte nicht verreisen. Paul could not travel is imperfect or preteritum. Um, we cannot say this in perfect. We cannot say Paul hat nicht verreisen gekonnt. This is super wrong. I never heard someone say it like this. So please try to remember when you have modal verb, 99.9% of past expressions are imperfect. Okay, if you want, you can press pause, you can do the exercise, and then we will compare. Okay, let's compare. Er hat bis 20 Uhr gearbeitet. Er musste bis 20 Uhr arbeiten. The rule of modal verbs did not change. We have the modal verb here, position two. We will use it as we need it. We have to pay attention now to the past and to the person. 
And the second verb, the actual verb, arbeiten, is in infinitive at the very end. Final position. Next one. Ich bin früh zu Bett gegangen. Ich wollte früh zu Bett gehen. Infinitive. Er hat den Wagen repariert. Er sollte den Wagen reparieren. He had or he should have repaired the car. Die Studenten haben viel gelernt. Die Studenten, plural, mussten viel lernen. Infinitive. The student had to study or to learn a lot. Die Kinder haben ferngesehen. Die Kinder durften. Again, we cut off the umlaut, cut off the en, and put ten. This is how we build it. So, die Kinder durften fernsehen. Infinitive. Carmen hat noch eingekauft. Carmen, female name, of course, wollte noch einkaufen. So now you can say, where's Carmen? And the other person can say, oh yeah, she wanted to buy something. She, be, she will be back in a second. Sie wollte noch einkaufen. This is a nice expression and we use it quite often also. Fritz hat früher nie Kuchen gegessen. This one is a little more special because of the mögen. Um, Fritz mochte früher nicht Kuchen essen. This sounds a little unnatural. It is correct grammatically. This is what they want you to know. Fritz mochte früher nicht Kuchen essen. But to be honest, I give you the real version if you want. Fritz mochte früher keinen Kuchen. This one here, what did we do? We have now mögen, not as a helping verb, but as a real verb. Fritz didn't like cake in the past because mögen is something we often say without a modal verb function. For example, ich mag dich, I like you. So we have the verb and then the thing we're talking about, like a person or a, a thing, let's say T. So um, other the other ones are the same. We can also say, er kann Englisch sprechen. He can speak English, but we can also say er kann Englisch. This is the short version. But for mögen, it is really valid to say it without a real verb, to make it the real verb, not the helping verb. So if you say Fritz mochte früher nicht Kuchen essen, everybody understands. It's easy, it's correct. But if you want to keep it in mind passively, that is better to say, Fritz mochte früher kein Kuchen. Then you are a little bit ahead of your, of your level, if you want. If it's too complicated and you want the grammar behind it, I will surely talk about it soon when it comes up and you don't have to stress now. Okay, this is the exercise. I hope it helped you a little bit to understand the building and the positions of the verbs. Here we have exercise three. We will read it. Sich beeilen, to hurry. Ihr müssen. So we have here the subject, the modal verb, and the real verb, I call it, the verb. So we want to make a question out of it. And we know the position of verbs and questions without question word. I say it almost every video, is verb subject. Now, which verb do we take? Of course, we take the modal verb. If there is a modal verb, we must put it in position one. If there is no modal verb, we take the normal verb. Musstet ihr euch beeilen? Did you have to hurry? So, ihr and beeilen is infinitive, beeilen, but it is a reflective verb. Sich beeilen, so we have to say, euch beeilen. Musstet ihr euch beeilen? 
the answer would be, for example, ja, wir, ihr became wir, mussten uns beeilen. We had to hurry ourselves, so to speak. If you want, until next time, you can try the examples and do the exercise. We will compare it next week. I can only recommend it because it's getting trickier. And if you are paying attention and do the exercises, it will be less of a struggle, I hope at least. If you have questions, leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for your support. You can follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm posting almost every day crash courses, games, quizzes, and try to interact with you guys, which I think is a good opportunity for some people to speak with a native speaker and to interact. So I will see you there or next week for my next video. Bye.